ARP inhibitors uh, for ovarian cancer have really transformed the treatment paradigm uh, for our disease. So uh, actually at ESMO 2016, uh, the first kind of big study in platinum sensitive recurrent disease was NOVA was presented. And from there, three PARP inhibitors were approved in platinum sensitive maintenance. Uh, last year, we presented the results of SOLA1, which was frontline incorporation of PARP inhibitor in the frontline for BRCA-associated cancers, which resulted in really an unprecedented improvement in progression-free survival for advanced ovarian cancer um, with a BRCA-associated advanced ovarian cancer. Uh, we're still following those patients for survival. We hope that there will be an overall survival advantage as well. And this year, uh, the results of three randomized phase three studies were presented simultaneously, uh, all a little different, but uh, the theme was incorporation of PARP inhibitors into frontline therapy uh, in patients who have BRC mutations, but more importantly, or as importantly, it, these studies uh, evaluated women who do not have a BRC mutation. Uh, and all the studies in different ways tried to get closer to the biomarker that would predict the patients who would benefit most uh, from incorporation of a PARP inhibitor into their frontline treatment. All three studies were positive. All three studies had progression-free survival as their primary endpoint, either measured by the investigator or measured by a blinded independent radiographic review. Um, uh, and so um, all three studies in the intention to treat arm were positive. All three studies in the, what we call homologous recombination deficient subgroup, which includes BRCA, were positive. And then you started to get some differences when you looked at patients who um, are BRCA wild type, but have other findings that make them homologous recombination deficient. Um, there were different degrees of positivity in that group. Uh, and then in the group of patients who are biomarker negative, uh, Primo is the only one that maintained its positivity in that group. Although it's marginal, I think we have to really look at what the best maintenance is in that particular group. Both Paola and Velia were negative, um, just no difference, not harm, but no difference in that subset. So we very clearly identified a new standard of care uh, for women with advanced ovarian cancer, at least among those who have homologous recombination deficiency. I think it's without question uh, that PARP inhibitor is, as maintenance uh, is the new standard of care. Now, patients may opt whether or not they want to do that with, with counseling regarding toxicities, which are manageable. Uh, there were no new safety signals at all um, revealed yesterday. So uh, it is what we know about PARP inhibitors, but really should be the standard of care. In the 50% of women who do not have homologous recombination deficiency and are considered homologous recombination proficient, I think we still have quite a bit of work to do in that large subset of our patients. Uh, PARP inhibitors may have a role, but it's not transformative, and I think we still have quite a bit of work there to really advance the kind of standard of care in that group. So that'll sort of be our next big challenge.